Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining today's webinar with Illinois Green Alliance and the Chicago Association of Realtors and Elevate. My name is Katie Kaluzny. I'm the Associate Director at Illinois Green Alliance. We're so excited to have you here today for maximizing value of high performing homes from listing to close. Um, and just wanted to give a few um, logistics before we get started today. Um, you are all muted upon entry, but you're more than welcome to enter questions into the chat or the Q&A and we'll be getting to those at the end of today's session. Um, the session is also being recorded, um, so you'll be able to find it on demand in our webinar library afterwards. We'll also send a follow-up email um, with any links and information we shared today, as well as um, a link to the recording, if you'd like to review any of the things or if you've missed something later on in the session. Um, I'm going to just tell you a little bit more about Illinois Green Alliance and then a little bit more about our sponsors and partners. Um, and get rid of, right into the session. Um, so a little bit about Illinois Green. Um, our, we are celebrating our 20th anniversary this year um, and we advance high-performing buildings in Illinois uh, through a number of ways. Um, one of those is educating building professionals um, in all sides of the industry, including um, real estate professionals, um, builders, architects, engineers, interior designers, um, anyone that really touches the building industry, we, we are very excited to share um, best practices with them. Um, we also work on policy and advancing barriers um, to policy advancement around green buildings, um, and we support existing buildings on their path to net zero as well um, through a number of programs and trainings and opportunities. Um, so that's a little bit about Illinois Green. Um, I also wanted to thank our sponsors um, for Illinois Green that support all of the work that we're doing, um, especially ComEd Energy Efficiency, um, Sloan, and Resource Innovations, um, some of our gold level sponsors. I also want to thank the Midwest Energy Efficiency Alliance for sponsoring today's program, um, speci specifically for today's event. So thank you, Mia. Um, you'll be hearing a little bit more from them later today. Um, and I want to thank our partners for today's session, um, the Chicago Association of Realtors and Elevate. And so I would like to introduce uh, Linda Sanchez, the Vice Chair of the Chicago Association of Realtors Sustainability Work Group, to say a few words about what they're up to. Um, and she'll turn it over to our speaker for today. So Linda... Welcome. Hello, and thank you, thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us today. I'm really excited about this conversation with Pamela today. Uh, but while I have an opportunity, I'd like to encourage um, our realtors to please sign up for our sustainability working group. I'd like to encourage people to take these solar classes and also the green designation classes that are available and our speaker today, Pamela, is our, also our instructor. Um, with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Pamela. She is a senior project manager with Elevate. And thank you, Pamela, for being with us today. Thank you very much. Um, I'm excited to be here. Let me pull up my slides. Okay, there we go. Thanks for bearing with me. So yeah, my name is Pamela Brookstein and I work for Elevate Energy, which is a nonprofit based in Chicago, though we do work nationally. Um, and we design and implement energy efficiency, clean energy programs really at this point. So we're touching solar and water. Um, so we design those programs and we implement them and we do try to make sure that everyone receives the benefits of an efficient home. Before we totally jump into this, I wanted to just get us all on the same page around definitions, and then I will talk about who I am. Um, but uh, high-performing home is usually the term I use instead of green or sustainable. I'm finding that those mean a lot of different things to different people. Um, but high performing is sort of this idea that a home is performing at a better level than a similar home that doesn't have air sealing, insulation, solar, you know, so these homes are more healthy, they're more comfortable, and they're safer frequently. Third party verification 
is a formal indication set by some body out there that says that a home has met a set of criteria for being high performance or high performing. So Energy Star certified homes would be an example of that. All right, so I work in the value for high performing homes initiative uh, division. I'm a division of one. Uh, and I've been at Elevate for nine years. And over the course of that nine years, I've been able to do a lot of consumer research with many of the stakeholders that are part of the real estate process. So appraisers, real estate agents, home buyers, home sellers. Um, I get to talk to people. I get to run focus groups. We're going to talk about one of those focus groups in a little bit. It, it's very fun. The other thing that I've been able to do through Elevate is design two continuing education courses, one on solar and one for high performing homes. And these classes are specifically for real estate agents. Um, so we have a little bit of building science, a little bit of solar knowledge built in there, but more importantly is how do real estate agents build their business with this information. And then, um, as Linda said, I do get to teach these classes as well as NARs, the National Association of Realtors Green Designation, which I'll be teaching at the end of August. Here is where our body of our little family of, of research papers sits. Um, these are the papers that we have to date. Hopefully, in a couple of months, we'll have um, we'll have something new that is also very Midwest focused. A lot of the research that is out there is on the coasts, and we do know that uh, real estate is local, and it is hard to talk to real estate agents in uh, Chicago about a study that was done in California. They're just it, it's a different animal. So all of our research to date is very Midwest focused. Here's the spoiler alert. So I suppose everyone could, uh, could drop off if they wanted to right now, though, please don't. But essentially what all of the research over the years that we've been doing this is saying is that stakeholders want third party verification and they want marketing materials. So home buyers are saying, we will not place a value on high performance anything unless we understand the range of benefits that those, those high performing features come with. They like third party certification because it helps them trust the upgrades um, were done correctly, but also that a contractor isn't making claims, a real estate agent isn't making claims, or the home seller. Um, so they really liked third-party certification. Real estate agents liked third-party certification and marketing materials that were provided by somebody else because it eased liability concerns that they have. They don't want to make any false claims. And so we want to be really cognizant of that, that real estate agents are small business owners, and we need to do everything we can on the energy efficiency side to help out. Appraisers are saying, listen, the more paperwork you give us, the more supporting documents, the better. The marketing helps, the third party certification helps, we need documentation. So that's what the research is saying. But I want to talk about a really fun set of focus groups that I got to do in February. Um, we had we had two focus groups that had um, eight people each that were people who would be buying homes in the next couple of years. And then we had two real estate agent focus groups, again, eight each of real estate agents who were working in the Chicago area. Among other things, this was one of the really cool exercises that we did. We gave everybody a list of features. These were the features that we gave them. And we said, rank these in order of interest for either buying your next home or um, for real estate agents, what you think your home buyers are looking for. Then we gave, so they ranked those. Then we gave everybody a list of benefits related to those features. So we talked about a heat pump in terms of the benefits that it provide. We talked about stainless steel appliances in terms of the benefit that those provide, sort of like looking more modern. 
Um, and we had people rank the benefits in order of interest. So here's an example. Here's a feature of being a heat pump. This home uses significantly less energy than typical homes, helping you save on utility bills while protecting the environment. So when we gave homeowners just the feature heat pump on the list of things that they absolutely had to have in their next home was ranked last. When we gave them that list of benefits, it moved up to second, which is a pretty incredible jump actually. But here's what happened when we showed these to real estate agents. Real estate agents stayed consistent in their ranking of features and benefits and did not think that home buyers would be interested at all in energy efficiency, clean indoor air, um, any of, of those things, uh, be more comfortable. So that was very interesting. Um, Here's what we did, attic insulation feature for homeowners, six out of seven, benefit moved up to third. Um, and I guess I accidentally left out the real estate agent one, but I believe it stayed fifth place, um, sixth or fifth place for both homeowners and uh, real estate agents. So here you can see where everything shook out after we showed benefits. Um, finished basement stayed at the top. And what we found out from our conversations is that uh, finished basement is really tied to COVID. People were, <laughs> people were adamant about having a space for children and a space for working and just being away from noise and tumult in the house. But heat pump, attic insulation, and air sealing all moved up when we between showing a feature and a benefit. On the agent side, that list of benefits that you're looking at is exactly the order that they gave us when we showed them just the features on their own. Really good real estate agents understand marketing and the importance of marketing. I love this quote, we are trying to paint a picture for the buyer about why they want to come see this home. So this is just one of my favorite MLS listings. Um, I troll MLS listing, you know, the comment sections, they're just fun to read um, and to learn about sort of what's big in the industry right now, what people are saying about certain things. So just look at the things I've highlighted. The number of adjectives here is spectacular. Quiet street, great neighborhood, magic zip code, spectacular kitchen. I mean, not just a kitchen, but a spectacular kitchen. And they don't just have a pool in the backyard. It's large and it's sparkling. Um, and obviously the dining in the neighborhood is wonderful. But now look at this. See documents tab for solar details. Nothing here about the benefits of solar or how exciting solar could be. And agents do need to be careful about what they say um, about solar in the comment section, but there are definitely some things that could have been spelled out here. Um, and so real estate agents have been finding through the teaching that I get to do, because um, I do get to teach several hundred real estate agents a year. And they, they're interested in learning how to market these things better, how to talk about the benefits in a safe way. Okay, so I, this is actually two presentations in one, and I am going to tell you uh, a true sad story uh, that involves me. For those of you paying attention, my name is Pamela Brookstein, and that is my home on the right side. And the Harmons, in full disclosure, are friends of mine, and their home is on the left. So here's what happened. We both put our homes on the market different times, about a year and a half apart. Here's the similarities between our sales. Our homes are the same age. We both live in about 110-year-old homes. We're both in the same neighborhood. 
we used the same amazing real estate agents. We had most of the same upgrades. Also, both of our homes were Illinois Home Performance with Energy Star certified. So my home went on the market first. And I, so this is my certificate. This is my Illinois Home Performance with Energy Star certificate. Uh, and by the way, this photo is in my phone. Like I, I love having this, this certificate. I like that we have this work done and that our home was certified. Um, so we had it sitting out at the showings and at the open houses. And what Joe said was, this was just more trouble than, than was worth it mainly because people didn't know what R value was. They don't know what air sealing is. What is 15% energy reduction? Like, what does that mean? And in the context of the world, people were confused and Joe didn't feel comfortable expanding on a lot of those conversations. And when I've shown this certificate in real estate agent focus groups, they are also very confused. Um, because it doesn't talk about any of the benefits. It doesn't talk about my experience in this home being different. I just had a call this morning and we were talking about um, air sealing and insulating the attic, but then when you did the, the walls, what a difference that made. And it really did. My experience in this home changed when we did that. Okay, so this is my experience. Also, long story short, um, we ended up taking our house off the market. We didn't sell, I'm still here. That's a very long story. Okay, so here's what Jean and John did. We got their house, or I helped get their home Pearl certified, um, which is a third party certification. It's a national certification for existing homes. They provided a really robust packet of marketing information that was out and about the house the takeaway sheet that people could take when they went home talked about the high performing benefits. There was also someone on staff um, at Pearl who was talking to the real estate agent about how to come up with a listing price and how to sort of deal with the appraisal. And what was helpful is that there was actually a report and a letter for the appraiser explaining what the high performing benefits were and what that meant. Okay, so here was their experience. Uh, the home sold in 28 days at full list price with a backup offer over list price. Um, I would like to say that uh, and explain that this home was listed at 10% above what comps, comparable properties, would have indicated the home could have been listed at, but it was it was listed for more money based on the high performing features and the certification. The agent, Joe, credits the success to the marketing material that was provided by Pearl, mainly because people walking through the house, the house spoke for itself. Um, you know, like there was a something about the attic hatch. You know, most people aren't asking about the attic hatch. You all may be asking about the attic hatch and how well sealed it is, but most people don't. Um, so, you know, it calls out why that is special, things like that, why the furnace is special. Um, so, and then the appraisal, the home appraised at the full list price. And the uh, appraiser actually told Joe that without the, that full robust report that was given to him and the green and energy efficiency addendum that was included with the report, the appraiser could not have given the home that appraisal at 10% over comps. So that is, that's fascinating. Um, and I know that this is, this is a sample size of one, but it was still really interesting to go through this process with my house, with a friend's house, that we had really done the identical upgrades and our experiences were so different in the real estate market. So what went right? What went right for Jean and John is that they had the marketing materials that called out the full range of benefits of high performing features. And that's what our focus groups with home buyers are telling us. We need to know all of the benefits outside of 
energy efficient. Energy efficient didn't mean much to anyone. And most people said that with just that word, those words, energy efficient, they would not pay more. They would not value that home for more. The home was listed for a higher price, which was key. The real estate agent had support, which is really important. And then again, for the appraiser, they received the addendum and a report that detailed all of the upgrades. So um, next time I put my house on the market, I will be ready to go. And that's me. That is the, the end of this presentation. I want to bring back Linda and Katie, and then we can, we can move to um, Q&A. Thank you so much, Pamela. Um, yeah, I appreciate all of that. I'm, I'm going to encourage folks to put their questions in the chat or the Q&A, um, or if you want to um, even share stories about your experience in this too, I can unmute folks. Um, so you can try and raise your hand and I could try and do that too with my tech wizardry here on Zoom. Um, but before we get into the questions, while I wait for a couple of those to come in, um, I wondered if you guys could share a little bit more, both of you, about, you know, classes and designations and, you know, how are, how did you, how are you educated? How did you get educated in this space? What are you doing to continue learning and growing in this area? And what could others on the call or viewing this webinar later be looking into as well? Well, um, thank you, Pamela. I'll, I'll, I'd like to say thank you. I didn't realize you were going to add the addendum to your slide, but that's really exciting. Um, I find that uh, many realtors uh, are not familiar with the addendum. And it would be great. It's something that I'm going to do in my office for every listing that we take that it's part of the packet, the listing packet, so that we get into the habit of using the form. And while we're on that addendum, um, I'd like to encourage realtors um, and I'd like to encourage them to invite their favorite um, lenders to also sign up uh, for other webinars and for the sustainability um, group um, uh, letters, letterhead that goes out, not the letterhead, excuse me, the uh, newsletter that goes out because we will be having more education on some of these uh, topics like the addendum. Um, thank you for that, Pamela. So please look out for um, other events such as this. And I really want to encourage people to sign up for the green designation and the uh, solar classes. Pamela, did you wanna add something more to that? Um, just as far as education that was out there, I would say, you know, for real estate agents are actually, people ask me all the time if they can come to any of the classes. And I would like to give a real shout out to CAR, to the Chicago Association of Realtors, because they're the only association in the country that I can tell so far that offers an energy efficiency class and a solar class every quarter, which is amazing. They also offer the green designation um, usually I teach it in August. No one, no other association across the country has committed to trying to get their agents up to speed on these topics. That's great. Yeah. And there's, there's a huge pivot in the market. There's, uh, you know, people are becoming more aware of environmental issues and uh, energy efficiency, and we need to be prepared and have the resources available for our homeowners, our, our buyers and our sellers. That's wonderful, thank you. Um, I had a follow-up question around designations from, um, from Karen and she was asking, how is the green designation similar or dissimilar to the FIA standard for, FIA standard for consultants? Well, and I saw that Jacob put something in there, but mm -hmm. but the green designation is specifically for realtors. Mm -hmm. So it has a focus on what 
realtors are thinking about in their day-to-day -day business, because it is important to remember real estate agents are small business owners. And um, so whenever I teach, I talk about how do you build your business using this knowledge? Because people, I, I also start every one of my classes saying the same thing, which is I understand people are not coming to you saying, I want to buy a greenhouse. They would go broke if they, if an agent put out their shingle and said, I sell greenhouse because that's just not going to happen. When I was in the real estate market, pretty green, like I have vermicomposting and all my clothes are um, secondhand and I don't, we do have air conditioning. I try not to use it. I just make everyone sweat in the house. However, what I told Joe was I want a house in this price range in this location. I never at any point said I want a greenhouse. So this is about what I'm trying to do and what I talk to the agents about is talking about a house in a different way that expands the conversation and keeps the real estate agent at the center of that conversation. That sounds good. Um, I think there's some back and forth in the chat. Thanks, Jacob, for clarifying further with Karen. Um, there was a question about just for if just in case there's anyone outside of Illinois that's attending the webinar, is the green designation um, only for Illinois? The, no, it's national. So it's a national designation, but if an agent wants to get continuing education credits, if they're an Illinois real estate agent and they took it through CAR, they would get those credits. Um, but someone from Maine wouldn't get credits for taking it live. They would have to go online. Thank you. Um, Pamela, I've got it is one. worth noting on that topic too. I, I'm Thank like you. this random voice that just pumped in. <laughs> It, it is worth noting, though, like if you take the green designation because of the fact that most locals don't offer it, you'll be traveling somewhere. So NAR offers it here and there. It just depends from time to time where they're offering. And it does change. A lot of times they will offer it in D.C. because they have location in D.C. And a lot of times they may try to offer it in Chicago because the location here. But Carr has really stepped in and, and is offering it here in the city. So typically NAR will direct folks here. So if you take the green designation, you may have folks um, in that class who are coming from other markets, which could be good for networking. And I can see a question from Karen too. Um, I mean, basically it's, it's trade association type continuing education that works through the states and what people need to keep their licenses active. So if you're a realtor, you need to take a certain number of hours each year in order to keep your license active and to, to transact as a realtor. So one of the classes you may want to take would be the green designation because that might be more interesting or relevant to you than some other class that might also get you your continuing education. So it kind of serves more as an elective type credit for realtors. Um, but it's also useful for even if you already have earned your hours for CE because of the way that it makes the business case for the green property, right? So it's not just the idea of let's save the world by reducing energy consumption, which of course everyone also wants to do, but it's what Pamela's talking about. It's how you get a buyer who says, I want a spot in this location to say, great. And have you thought about adding this type of thing to your loan to get solar panels on the roof and better insulation? Or that's awesome, but have you thought about between these two houses on the block, this one would save you a ton on your monthly bills because it has these features, you know? And after taking the class, you can recognize that stuff and advocate for your clients in a way that they will really appreciate because they may not know what they want. So that's kind of why you take that class. I think there shouldn't be a lot of times I, I see a, a thing happen with education that's specific like this, where you end up with like there can only be one. Um, so it's kind of like there's all these other classes. We always see them as just all the options on the table. But if we're taking a green class, well, it needs to be either this one or this one. Right. And because there's not room for all of them. And I, I think we should rethink that because you know, taking the designation of the green thing will help you in the world of realtors. And that's really great. It probably won't mean a ton to your clients. But taking other classes on this will also better equip you as an agent and possibly those other designations may carry more real world cachet. It's hard to say. So I would certainly encourage someone to look at all options, but but the green designation is specifically geared toward realtors. Thank you, Jacob from Carr. I appreciate your your voice chiming in. Um, I will say for those that aren't realtors on the call, um, there are like the FIAS consultant and there's other designations if you're looking to, for more of a building science um, background or an energy efficiency or building science if you're 
doing remodeling or if you're doing a major renovation of someone's home and you're trying to make sure you're doing all of those things correctly so that it can be sold in this way as a high performing home, um, that there's other classes like that that you would wanna take as a consultant or a builder or contractor. Um, I'm happy to share some of those in the follow-up email as well for those that are interested in that. Um, and anyone can sign up for the sustainability group for our uh, newsletter. Uh, we encourage designers, architects, lenders, contractors, uh, family, friends. Uh, we encourage everyone to uh, sign up and stay engaged. And I do see um, Rick is on here and Sarah Sousley. Um, uh, the Chicago Association of Realtors Sustainability Group, we are hoping to put together um, an event in the very near future, Ask a Green Appraiser. So please look out for that. Um, I think there's gonna be a lot of great information on that upcoming event. Absolutely. I see another question here that I think will tie um, some of the comments from uh, some folks that are saying here as well, but Pamela, can any home be high performing and how? <laughs> it's like my favorite question. Um, yes, any home can be high performing. What I tell, what I frequently say is, um, you know how sometimes we, we tell children they can be anything they want to be, even if we kind of know maybe they can't. Um, any home actually can be high performing. Uh, I live in a 110 year old bungalow. I have done, I've had several blower door tests, uh, blower door tests done because I'm constantly trying uh, to lower my number. I'm a little obsessive about it. Uh, and while I will never be what a brand new home is, uh, you know, as far as maybe energy tightness, between the air sealing and insulation and the attic, um, in the, the basement, in the walls, just between tightening everything up as much as I could around the window sills um, and all the different energy star and actually above appliances that we have here, my home is definitely operating at a much higher level than many, many other homes out there. Um, the other thing that I think is really important and what I tell real estate agents to remember is that this doesn't all have to happen in the first five years of home ownership. This is a process. Um, and it is, I've lived here 25 years and over time I have named this house home high performance. And it, it really is important to remember that the, the most energy efficient, the greenest home is the home that already exists. I, um, there's a couple of people in the chat talking about um, some things that they're renovating. I'm going to ask Sarah if she wants to be unmuted and share her story at all. Um, so you write me back in the chat if you want to or not, Sarah Mac McMurray. <laughs> um, but I am, um, I did want to mention too that Illinois Green does have a program coming up on August 8th that should go live today to register for this afternoon when I've finished finalizing the description, um, which is called um, From the Windows to the Walls um, about um, retrofitting, um, uh, you know, both multifamily and single family homes and what the building envelope um, really can do there. Um, I'm gonna unmute Sarah so that you can share what you're talking about because it sounds really interesting and, and related to this. If I can find you in the chat. Unmute. Here I am. There you, hear you me? are, sir. Sure. Okay. So I'm, yeah, working on a huge project. Um, bought this two flat last fall. It's a beautiful 20s with the brick and a tiny bit of stained glass. And it's in a um, R1 zoning district. So it's on a great big lot, but you couldn't put another, you could only put one house on it. So they're developers it went under contract and came back a few times and I ended up getting it for a pretty good price because the tenants had been there 27 and 30 years but you can imagine it had been renovated in the 70s they really had not kept much charm they kept the hardwood floors that's about it and it was essentially two bed one bath units 
And um, so the more I looked at it, the more I just said, I, we just got to tear this whole thing apart and start over. Um, I, I couldn't figure out a way to keep the floor plan and, and make it work in today's environment. So basically we did, we just, I just, we gutted the whole thing. Um, and it's been a really long process and I didn't know, I have my green designation, but that doesn't really get you there when it comes time to interview the suppliers and, you know, sometimes they have great words, but not great products. Um, so yeah, I think we're doing pretty well. I'm definitely doing two steps forward and one back several times, like with the ERV, after we did the insulation, um, Skokie came in, it, we're in Evanston address and schools, but Skokie zoning and services. So they came in and said, well, you need the air exchange. We're working with Priority Energy as the energy rater. Um, and they actually didn't think we would need that, but I actually, I feel better having the air exchangers because you know with the blown in insulation, it's, it's amazing. It's so quiet. We don't even have new windows yet. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm doing everything and it's a ridiculous project, um, but it's really fun and cool and exciting. And I'm looking forward to doing more projects um, in a more thoughtful manner after I've learned everything on my own place. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks for sharing. Um, I have a couple more questions in the chat. Um, one, um, just kind of if if any of you, would, um, Linda and Pamela and Jacob, feel free and chime in or Catherine, um, if there's, you know, there's a myth among developers and builders that it's too expensive to build sustainably or be net zero or net positive or passive, um, how can we financially show that the value of energy efficiency measures actually provides this increasing value. Um, I might go to Pamela first, because I know there's a lot of research on this, um, but the myth busting is, is definitely hard to do when someone has that in their head or, you know, 10 years ago when maybe everything was still a lot more expensive um, than it is today and you still think that it's probably the same. So I'm just curious if you can share some myth busting tips for us here. Yeah, I am going to go back to the marketing because what we're really finding is that contractors that are building high performing homes, they, they make them energy efficient, they list them for more money, and then they get mad when an appraiser doesn't, um, actually, let me back up, they are often not listing them for more money. And then they expect appraisers without any documentation provided to them about the upgrades that have been made and the benefits of those upgrades. Um, the appraisers are, are, are also, they can't appraise higher than the list price. Um, that's not their job. So um, it really comes down to those builders and truthfully people who are doing upgrades as well um, you know, air sealing insulation, it behooves us to start making sure that we include marketing, not just any marketing, I, we're test marketing, um, part of what we're doing in our focus groups is testing messaging and different materials and when they need to be provided. But again, people don't pay for something that they don't know is there and if they don't know what the benefit is. Um, when I teach, I use an example of a running stock um, that I ended up buying and I, I, I bought a very expensive running sock. I now have like lots of pairs of these running socks. And if the marketing had said, if the, on the package it had said, this is a black sock with a green stripe that covers your foot to the ankle, that would have been true. That all would have been true. But I wouldn't have understood all the benefits that that sock would give me. And some of it was they knew who they were marketing to. They were marketing to an older runner um, who was probably suffering from a whole list of ailments from having run for a long time and had a little extra money to spend. But they got me and I got that pair of socks and it's like, I, I give it to everybody. So we do really need to go back. Like seriously, everybody gets that sock as a gift. Um, so it really does go back to that. We have to call out what the benefits are. We have to just stop saying this home has a heat pump because as you saw, heat pumps were listed seventh out of seven. 
people didn't know what they were. We yeah. have to explain the benefits. People also said to us, they don't want to read a lot. They want a bullet point. Mm -hmm. Like, and if you look at any marketing that's out there, and um, there's a lot, uh, look at those ads, because I now study advertising as well, as much as I can, you know, just to see what they're calling out. And you've got to be pithy and you've got to show how it's going to change the experience for the person. I'd like to call out um, the whole environmental thing. What people have been saying is we care about the environment. We do, we really super do. But we aren't going to necessarily value a home or value some sort of equipment specifically based on its environmental impact. We need to know how it how it impacts us right now today. So they said we'd like to know about the environmental impact, but that is not enough. Mm -hmm. And again, when I was shopping for my home, I did not ask about the environmental impact of my home, the home that I was looking for. Price, location, better kitchen than I currently have. So, um, which was a low bar. Uh, so marketing is very important, important. I do see a question here regarding uh, research uh, available, if there's research available uh, regarding homes that, that are all electric, that do not burn fossil fuel. I know that we're uh, moving away from fossil fuel, yay. And that's uh, great for the environment. Pamela, can you talk a little bit about uh, research available? on all electric homes? There is no there is none. research specifically about all electric homes. The research that is available, and there is some really high quality research that's out there that's appraiser led. Actually, I saw that we had Rick on the line and he's um, behind, he worked on the, uh, the appraisal paper that we did here for Chicago. Um, <sighs> what it's showing is that third party certified homes that are marketed as such. So this is key. It has to be marketed in the MLS as such. Those homes are selling for on average across the country a 5% premium. The thing about all electric is that you can't pull that data out of an MLS necessarily. Agents aren't reporting it that way in the multiple listing service. So an appraiser can't pull the data that says this is an all electric home versus not. The other thing that we really are finding is that at least in the Midwest, the environment is not first. It, it might be in California, but it's not here right now. It's on the list of things people like to know, but it's not how they're basing decisions. Mm -hmm. Uh, someone here is asking regarding uh, green appraisers is how you find green. You have to ask your lender specifically for green appraisers. And yes, there is a certification for um, green appraisers. It's a great question. And we should all be asking uh, our lenders, all of our favorite lenders uh, for green appraisers. I have a question here around solar as well. Um, um, asking in in your experience, will a home um, will a homeowner get their investment back on a solar installation if they unexpectedly sell within a year or two after install? Um, the research shows that when marketed, when it's an owned system that is marketed properly, buyers can get, they're never going to get the full value of their investment in a year, probably, maybe, I don't know, I don't know, but um, to me, it's like driving a car off the lot, um, you know, you're, you're going to lose a little right there. However, there are lots of problems with the appraisal and with, um, and at the, you know, with the lender. Um, but it is absolutely 100% possible. Those sellers need to take some extra steps um, to make that happen. Um, I have a question in the Q&A too that I have uncovered. 
Um, where can we direct clients who are trying to find the best resources or contractors for improving their home performance? Does Elevate have a list? Are there other lists of contractors that are um, able to perform energy efficiency improvements? So in the classes I teach, what I always say is, because no, I don't have a list necessarily. But what I do say is that if you're working with a weatherization or an air sealing and insulation contractor, make sure that contractor has a BPI certification is certified by the Building Performance Institute. It's not a guarantee that things are going to go swimmingly, but you're certainly a big step ahead um, because you have someone who's taken advanced courses in building science and understands um, that a home is a system. So that's really, really important. Um, the other thing is that there are trade allies with, um, with the utilities. And sometimes those trade allies have to meet a certain set of criteria to be a part of those programs. So that might be a place that you'd like to go. Um, that, I was gonna mention that too, Catherine. Yeah, no, I was just going to say the utilities is a good place to start. And sometimes they offer incentives um, to help offset some of the installation costs for some things. And those um, offerings are constantly changing. So it's a good place to look at your utility, specifically your electric utility. They tend to have a few more programs uh, than the gas utilities. But honestly, both of them offer programs. And they do have some contractors um, that they often partner with or, again, that are familiar with the paperwork and can get you the rebate and those details uh, filled out nicely. So it's a good place to start, but I'll reiterate what Pamela said about the BPI certification also being an important thing uh, to ask about. And, and one, I think, way to identify that if it's a super easy place to start if you haven't done anything is um, there's a home energy assessment that's free. That's a partnership between ComEd and the gas utilities um, where they'll come out and look at everything at least on a really basic level. Um, they're not gonna go in super in depth, but they'll identify some initial items and um, they will let you know which, which projects might be good to start on next and where those contractors are. Located and that report it. is helpful as you talk to contractors to have that report that they give you from your home energy assessment for part of the conversation with contractors is a helpful start for them as well. Yeah. Um, I have one more question and then I think we're gonna to go to some wrap up. Um, so I have a question from Nicole. I live in a small home. All the comps of similar size in my area would likely be considered teardowns. How do I get comps that reflect the energy efficiency of my home? Linda or Pamela, to either of you. Of course, um, it's, it's hard to find comps if you don't have other homes that are renovated in your area, but that's where the third uh, party certification comes in handy uh, because sure, if, if you've renovated your home and um, you have green features in your home, you need to be able to uh, give it the value that it needs. So that third party certification is actually very, very important. And I think that's where uh, you get the value, not necessarily comps in your area, um, but the comparables will, will of course help you with the pricing, but you, with that third party uh, certification, you'll be able to give uh, the appraiser all the green features in your home, assuming that your home has been renovated with some green features. Pamela, did you wanna to add to that? No, that's such a specific question. So I think Linda, you, yeah, I would always just say, cause I'm not a real estate agent and that's where I would say, talk to your real estate agent, but find a good real estate agent, not necessarily your neighbor's cousin's sister. Um, you want someone like Linda, you want someone like Sarah who's on the, um, oh, Sarah is, I guess, who are on the, the call, probably others. You know, you want to talk to someone who really does understand how special these upgrades are. Thank you.
Well, great. I think we've gotten through most of the questions here, except for the one that says, will you share the presentation afterwards? I think the answer is yes, Pamela. Yes, I'll share it as a PDF as long, along with the recording. But I'm going to turn it back over to um, Jacob from CAR to just share a little bit more about what's coming up with CAR and how to get more involved. Um, and he's going to introduce Catherine to talk a little bit more about Mia, and I will wrap it up for today. So Jacob, can I turn it back to you? Absolutely. Thanks so much, everybody, for coming today. We definitely appreciate all of your, you know, investment in this event. And I, and I just wanted to say, you know, a couple of years ago, the Chicago Association of Realtors did indeed establish the Sustainability Pledge. Uh, we created a new work group and we've taken some steps to engage on this topic. We all agree that sustainability and green real estate are vital and important to home buyers and any property owner as well as issues that are gonna become more and more relevant as the days come. So this is a, you know, a place where Chicago is trying to lead on this topic, particularly among agents and realtors. We do have a lot of events. Uh, Linda mentioned earlier that you can, even whether you're a realtor or not, you can sign up for our newsletters and you can sign up to be a sustainability ambassador if you'd like. Um, those, those are things that anyone can access or look at. Our events are always open to the public. Uh, so you can attend at the non-member pricing and network. These are really great ways for you to connect with realtors, particularly if you're working in a parallel industry or, you know, you yourself are a realtor and aren't currently attending those events. If you go to chicagorealtor.com slash sustainability, that'll take you there or redirect. And I did post a link in the chat as well. Um, Linda is our vice chair this year. She will be the chair of our sustainability work group next year. So she's part of that brain trust that helps to lead that work group. And Sarah Sousley, who I believe I saw in the chat possibly, is our current chair. She, I think, is in this room as well today virtually. Either of them would be great folks to reach out to if you want to learn about what realtors are up to, if you're looking for a green realtor or whatever to connect. Um, I'm sure both of them can post their emails in the chat and would love to hear from you. Um, and we're always open to ideas if you know of groups that may want to partner on something like this event we're doing today with IGA. Um, we're definitely open to those kinds of ideas. We currently partner with Chicago Parks Foundation and with Rebuilding Exchange. Uh, we're definitely open to other kinds of partnerships. And we've got some cool events. The one event that I would encourage you to put on your calendar, pencil it in. We don't have a web page up for it yet, and we're still planning out the event. But on November 29th, we will be doing our first ever uh, green real estate luxury summit. So we're going to look at the top of the market properties. We've always really looked more at the starter homes and the more affordable parts of the market. But for this event, we're going to look at those high-end properties that inherently will have lots of green features and that you know you may be interested in learning about. So November 29th, pencil it in uh, and look for an update from us about that event. We also have an annual clean and green that we do with Chicago Parks every June 14th. We just did one this year and had you know over a hundred folks come out. We'd love, it's always open to the public and we'd love to have some of you all come and help us clean the parks next year at Pitch In, or I would encourage you to do your own Pitch In. The Parks Foundation can get you supplies to do it. It's a great way to clean up your neighborhood parks. And some of them need more love than others because they may not have parks advisory councils. Um, but chicagorealtor.com slash sustainability if you wanna learn more what we're up to. And thanks again for having us. Catherine, I'd like to go ahead and pass the mic to you and to Mia. Catherine's awesome. She sponsored this event today. She often sponsors our green designation class with Pamela. So good people to know and great source of information. Thanks, Jacob. Yeah, hopefully I'll be helping sponsor some of those other events you already talked about. We need to talk. Um, but I work at the Midwest Energy Efficiency Alliance. We're a nonprofit organization located here in Chicago, but we work in 13 states of the Midwest. And I often joke, I don't know, a lot of people don't think of the Dakotas and Kentucky as the Midwest, but you can see our map there. We cover multiple areas. We're part of a, a group of six regional energy efficiency organizations across the country working to promote energy efficiency, optimize energy generation, and reduce consumption, create jobs, create carbon emissions throughout the Midwest. Uh, we do provide a lot of education and training um, and hands-on activity. We work a lot with policymakers as well. Um, and real estate agents is one of the audiences that I think are really underappreciated as partners on promoting and advocating for energy efficiency. So we're so happy to have right here in our backyard, the Sustainability Committee of the Chicago Association of Realtors 
Uh, currently, our funding for working with real estate professionals is limited to Illinois and Missouri, but we are often regularly trying to host classes, trainings, and events. It's kind of a long link there at the bottom of the page, and actually, I did get it out. Or Katie, if you're able to chat, uh, add it to the chat while I'm talking, um, that we're really always looking for partners to uh, host real estate trainings or trainings for real estate uh, professionals that include agents, brokers. I can literally, we can send somebody to an office just for a lunch and learn informal thing. And as Jacob mentioned, we often try to sponsor the National Association of Realtors Green Designation course. There's also, as Pamela mentioned, other courses, solar for real estate agents and a high performing home class that she teaches that are certified for continuing education units here in Illinois and Missouri. Um, and so on that page, you can see some of the classes we currently have scheduled. We're always trying to add more. And again, we can do informal presentations. I can bring lunch, talk to a group of agents, um, really quite flexible and uh, just want to let you guys know that we're here and available and to really note that you guys are, I think, a really important uh, partner in promoting and improving energy efficiency in the Midwest. So thanks for joining us today and hopefully I'll see some of you at other events too. Thanks, Catherine. And I apologize, I can't grab the link while I'm sharing my screen. Right now, well, you're saying that. <laughs> but yeah. while I'm closing up, please do that. And I'll also make sure to put it in the follow up email to all of the attendees um, as well. But I just want to thank everyone again um, on behalf of Illinois Green. Um, really excited to be partnered with CAR and Elevate on this program. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, Catherine. Um, everybody for um, asking such great questions, um, really great participation in the webinar today, which I know is hard while we're all virtual, but thank you for um, joining in and, and sharing. And thank you, Sarah, for sharing a story as well. So thank you all. Have a wonderful, uh, wonderful rest of your afternoon. Um, and we'll talk with you all soon. Thank you.